Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to pick up a couple of uh, miscellaneous things that we're going to talk about about normal distributions. And, and most of them, or at least first, we're going to talk about standardizing normal distributions. So recall, in the last unit, we proved the following results for discrete distributions. And these are also turn out to be true for continuous random variables as well. The expected value of x plus some constant is the expected value of x plus c. So basically what that's saying is, is if you shift the random variable, you shift its mean by the same amount. The expected value of a constant times x is a constant times the expected value of x. And this basically says if you multiply x by a constant, then you're going to multiply the mean by the same amount. So consider the distribution of z-scores. Now remember, z-score, uh, z is x minus mu over sigma. So the expected value of z is the expected value of x minus mu over sigma. Remember, mu and sigma are some constants for a particular distribution. Well, because this is something on the top divided by sigma, or in other words, multiplied by 1 over sigma, we can use rule 2 to say that that's 1 over sigma times the expected value of the top. The expected value of the top is expected value sum, so it's expected value of x plus the expected value uh, a suspected value of x plus uh, a negative mu. But the expected value of x is mu, so mu minus mu is 0 divided by sigma is 0. So what this is saying is that if you take z scores for any distribution and look at the distribution not of the original x's but of the z scores, that that will have a mean of 0. Now also for any distribution, uh, the variance of x plus a constant is the same as the variance of x. So that's saying if we shift a distribution sideways, it has no effect on the, of the variability. But if we multiply a constant times x, we end up multiplying the variance by c squared and the standard deviation by the absolute value c. So for z scores, uh, the variance of z is the variance of x minus b over sigma. Well, applying the second rule first, that's the variance of the top divided, multiplied by the constant 1 over sigma squared. So that's, that's the variance of x minus mu over sigma squared. But the variance of x minus mu is the variance of x. Variance of x is just our original sigma. And so that cancels out to be 1. So what does this say? If you put these things together, that says given any random variable x, normal or otherwise, if we compute z scores, uh, x minus mu, and then divide that by sigma, that the mean of the distribution of z scores is 0, and the standard deviation of the, of the distribution of z scores is 1. In fact, the z scores, what they're really telling us are how many standard deviations the, the x value is above or below its own mean. Now we also have another special property that's true of normal distributions, not necessarily true of all distributions, is that if we have a normal random variable with any mean and standard deviation, then the distribution of its z-scores is also normal. So in this case, it's normal with standard deviation zero, a standard deviation one and mean zero. So that means it's a standard normal distribution. So sometimes we call the standard normal distribution a z distribution because it is a distribution of z scores. So sometimes we call this this process of finding uh, finding z scores we call that standardized. So um, this this fact that every distribution that is a normal distribution can be standardized and we can look at the distribution of z-scores and we know that that distribution of z-scores is a standard normal. This is very useful fact, particularly uh, back in the days when they were using uh, probability tables, normal tables, to work this out. So since every probability problem can be uh, or inverse probability problem from a normal distribution, can be reframed as an equivalent probability or inverse probability problem based on a standard normal distribution, it turns out you only really need one normal table. You just need a standard normal table. Okay, so if you can have a table for a standard normal distribution, 
you can convert a problem about an arbitrary normal distribution to a problem about a standard normal distribution, look up your values in the table. Now this, this part is not usually necessary with modern calculator technology because we can just put in the mean and the standard deviation in our calculations for inverse normal or normal probability calculations. However, we will sometimes still make use of this fact that this uh, standard normal distribution is there and particularly if we phrase the question in the terms of the number of standard deviations above or below the mean, then we can really just answer that question with a standard normal distribution without actually having to find out what those corresponding x values are because the number of standard deviations above or below the mean is the z-score. So let's look at an example here and calculate for example, the probability that x is between 13 and 26 for a normal distribution with mean 22 and standard deviation 7 with and without standardizing. So what does this turn out to be? Well, on the left is probably the, the easier way to do it with the calculator technology is to not standardize it and just say this is a normal CDF from 13 to 26 with a mean 22 and a standard deviation 7. We get 0.616. 8, 7, etc. For to do it with a normal CDF, uh, with a standard normal CDF, we need to first course find those corresponding Z scores. I'm going to call them A and B. So the Z score that corresponds to 13 is 13 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So it's 13 minus 22 in parentheses divided by 7. I store that as A. So 13 is about 1.2857 standard deviations below the mean. Whereas the 26, when I do its z-score, I get parentheses 26 minus 22, close parentheses, divided by 7, store that as b. It's about 0.5714 standard deviations above the mean. That's the z-score. So then I just do a normal CDF between those two z-scores, a and b, with a mean of 0 and standard deviation 1, and you see that, sure enough, we do get exactly the same value. So... As far as just doing a problem like this, it's not really uh, it's not really helpful to standardize them. But there are a few situations we may encounter down the road where we would like to standardize still, even though it's not necessarily uh, needed. Uh, but I think you can see in the old days where they wouldn't want to make up a table for every possible. It's impossible really to make up a table for every possible combination of mean and standard deviation that you could come up with. But you can make up a one normal standard normal table and look up these values from there. But with calculator technology, probably the left screen is the better way to do it. The next thing I want to say in this video is, is a notation. So uh, it's a pretty common notation to use a subscript here. So when you see the subscript alpha applied to z, so you see z sub alpha, this represents a z score so that the probability to the right is alpha. And this is uh, from a standard normal distribution because it's a z-score. And we're talking about a, a normal distribution when this is applied to. So recall that the input of inverse norm in your calculator is probably to the left of the output. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there that the subscript here refers to the probability to the right, but the inverse norm reverse refers to the probability. The input is the probability to the left. I kind of wish this was, was referring to a left, probability, which is actually a cumulative probability, or y value on the CDF, but this is a pretty standard notation to do it this way. So if we say z alpha, then it tells us the probability that the z score is greater than z alpha is the alpha, which means the probability that the z is less than z alpha is 1 minus the alpha. So z alpha then turns out to be inverse norm of 1 minus alpha uh, 0, 1. So it's a z-score, so it's from a standard normal distribution. So sometimes we'll use this notation. I, I don't particularly like it as well. I'll be, probably most of the time just use the calculator notation for inverse norm. But sometimes it's useful to use, and sometimes you'll see this z sub alpha notation as well. Okay, one more little topic that we want to cover in this video is combining normal distributions. 
So recall in the last unit on discrete probability, we proved the following results for discrete distributions, but they turn out to be true for continuous random variables as well. For any distribution, the expected value of x plus y is expected value of x plus expected value y. So what we're doing here is we're finding a new random variable, uh, call it w or something, which is x plus y, and you're finding it by just finding the random variables x and y and adding them up. And if, if we know the, the mean of each of the x and the y separately, then we know that the mean of the sum is the sum of the means there. Now that works for any distributions, x and y. But if the distributions are also independent, then we have a nice relationship among the variances, a pretty similar relationship. The variance of x plus y is the variance of x plus the variance of y. Now it's also true that if x and y are independent normal random variables, then x plus y is also a normal random variable. And of course, with the mean of the x plus y being the mean of the x plus the mean of the y, and the standard deviation of the x plus y being the square root of the two variances of x and y. So let's put this to work in a real world example. Suppose that assembly time for a particular device is normally distributed with mean 55 minutes and standard deviation 5 minutes. And packaging time for the completed device is normally distributed with mean 6 minutes and standard deviation 2 minutes. Let x represent the total time required to assemble and package the device. What type of distribution does x have? What is its mean and standard deviation? And then what is the probability that it will take more than 70 minutes to assemble and package a particular device? Well, by what we just seen on the previous slide, if we assume that, that assembly, assembly and packaging time are independent, which by the way is a pretty reasonable assumption, uh, these probably shouldn't uh, really affect each other too much, then x is normally distributed with the mean being the sum of the means, 55 plus 6 is 61, so there'll be a mean of 61 minutes. And the standard deviation, well, the, the variance is the sum of the variances. So the variance would be uh, the square of the standard deviation. So that would be uh, standard deviation squared or variance is 5 squared plus 2 squared. That's 25 plus 4 is 29. So the standard deviation is the square root of that. Standard deviation is the square root of 29. What's the probability it take more than 70 minutes to assemble and package a particular device? Well, one way you could do it is this. I took the 61 stored as M, which is you can't see here. Then I followed that by square root of 29 stored as S. More than 70 means I'm going to go up to infinity. Uh, and I always told you you could use the mean plus 10 times S. Store that as, I'll say, U for upper number that beyond which there's not enough probability to to bother with. And so then I did normal CDF from 70 to that upper limit mean and standard deviation. Now if I didn't want to use this I could I could just as easily said 115 or uh, something like that would have been fine for the upper. And so we see 0 0.0473 is the probability a little less than 5%. So in our next video, we're going to come back and do several more applications of normal distributions.